Now in our sixth year, this is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Talk like you've never heard it before. This is Alex Bennett. See, that's what it says, Alex. And this is the Ramble, and we go till midnight tonight, Eastern Daylight Time. He's smart. He's educated. He's a handsome as hell guy. He's, uh, what are you, Larry Brown? Uh, I'm a uh, beloved figure. A beloved figure. <laughs> a... Uh, uh, <laughs> Oh boy, how you doing, Larry? Good, good. I, uh, although it's a kind of a grim day, uh, it's the uh, sixth anniversary of losing Robin. Oh wow, that long, huh? I know. It's just time is unbelievable. Yeah, time is unbelievable. Oh boy. Well, someday you'll say it's been a year since we lost Alex. So you know. <laughs> Let's hope not. Oh boy, I wish I were dead right now. Like my eyes have been burning. Something terrible. I've got to, I've got to go see a doc. I've got to go see a doctor about my eyes, right? He told me before I can do the thing on your eyes, which is a, a lid lift. Okay, uh, I have to get an, uh, something done at Mount Sinai Hospital. So Marjorie called over to get it done at Mount Sinai Hospital, and they said, "How's the 26th?" And she said, "Fine." And then she made an appointment with the doctor shortly after that, the same day. And next thing we know, they're calling back saying, oh, we can't do it to 26. We have an opening in November. Oh, Jesus. By then, I'll be ripping my eyes out of my sockets, for crying out loud. You uh, know, you got to tell them you're in a great deal of pain. I mean, they're not, they don't have a lot of COVID cases over there. We only had, what, two deaths in the state of New York the other day, Right. And, yeah. and the amount of people in the hospital is down to 525, something like that, that are in the hospital because of COVID. And they're not all at Mount Sinai. So what's what's the problem in getting me an appointment, you know? I don't understand. I think they said the guy who does that isn't going to be back till November. Oh, they don't have another guy? Well, that's my point exactly. Your Mount Sinai Hospital, for crying out loud. Isn't there more than one ophthalmic, well, whoever, ophthalmic person there? God. Can you go somewhere else? I, you know, I don't know. Maybe I could. Maybe there's another place, you know. But anyway, so my doctor's office is calling over there to see if they can get an earlier date. All it is is a test the doctor has to have in order to make sure that I can get the lid lift. I mean, it's some, I don't know what it is. Nothing's easy anymore. Nothing's easy, no. You know, everything is doubly hard, and then they blame it all on COVID. You know, we can't yeah, do, that's a great excuse for anything. Yeah. We can't do that today because, you know, we got the COVID crisis going on. Yeah, is that the reason you can't pick up my garbage? You know, I mean, it's just ridiculous. Just yeah. ridiculous. Uh, I mean, I understand the, the, the problems that COVID presents, but the idea that, you know, that, oh, we can't do that because of COVID. It's ridiculous. Yes, you can. Well. You got you got to get on the phone and start saying you're in pain, and uh, you have to have it done now. I can't see. I'm bumping into walls. Uh, uh, yeah, right. So tell me you're turning into Mr. Magoo. No, but we get a, a, even a slight pollen count go up, and my eyes are like I want to rip them out of my sockets. Well, yeah, I'm sure it's the allergy. So uh, yeah, I'm sure it is. Although they say it's moderate today, whatever that means. Well, if you, you that can vary block by block. Uh, if there's a bunch of trees around your place, it's... yeah. Well, I got an air purifier. Oh yeah, you said that was helpful. Well, I I find if I keep the bedroom door closed, which Marjorie won't let me do, because she somehow has some phobia about the door to the bedroom being closed. Like maybe she can't escape. 
I mean, what? <laughs> that was, you know? I think, wasn't that Jimmy Hoffa in the movie? He had to sleep with the door open? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So so she has to have the door open, and it with, it, with the uh, air purifier, it just purifies the area, right? If the door's open, it's not, it's going to purify less, okay? So I close the door, and my eyes do feel measurably better, you know, so. Uh, but what the hell? I'll be dead soon. I think we both will. Yeah, yeah. How's everything out in California? Uh, we don't have, I don't think there's much rioting going on out here. <laughs> I, think, I think we're all right, although apparently from what I've been re- everyone le- is leaving the state. Oh, really? Where are yeah, they coming? Fact, I hope uh, they're not. Have, oh, uh, oh, oh. 25% of our building is vacant right now. Uh, I hope they're not coming here. Uh, no, I think they're going because everyone can work at home now. They're just moving to places where it's cheaper. Yeah, yeah, okay. But, I mean, there is like a, it's a, I was reading about there's a huge amount of people leaving here. Well, so rentals must be available they're, at a cheaper they're starting price. To go, yeah, they're, and they're starting to go down. Oh, wow. Oh, well, maybe I'll move back to San Francisco. What the hell? You you could less allergy. We'll get, come back here. We'll get the radio show going again. It'll be yeah, great. Yeah, I, I never had these allergy problems uh, in California quite as much. I mean, I'm I'm sure that during the summer, uh, if I went up to like Mount Tamalpais, I might start sneezing. But in the city of San Francisco, you got all that fog. You're constantly being moisturized. You know, the air. So uh, I never found I had the the allergies this badly. Now maybe maybe it's my age. I don't know. You know. Uh, yeah, I think it, I never had them until ten years yeah. ago. I think. Yeah. I think they do get worse with age. Yeah. So anyway, um, so uh, uh, let's see here. Oh well, yeah, San Francisco uh, woman might be the vice presidential candidate. Uh, who's that? Kamala Harris. Oh, I thought they'd given up on her. Or uh, no, not at all. You know, uh, but Le- uh, Willie Brown, uh, your brother, uh, <laughs> Willie Bubbles Brown, Willie Bubbles Brown, who was her lover, as you. Know. Yeah, he. Uh, yeah, she's pretty hot. So. Y- yeah, he. Um, she. He. He said she shouldn't. Re- it, 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 it made a public statement that she shouldn't run for vice president. And uh, what the reason for that being? He, she would make a better and more efficient attorney general. And uh, it's a good point, you know. She's very qualified in that area. She was the district attorney of San Francisco for many years. Yeah. So, but, um, you know. But if she was vice president, I think with Biden, she, it wouldn't be long before she is president. Yeah, well... Uh, Biden is, um, um, I, I, you know, I think he's a one-term president. I don't think he's planning on more than that because he's going to be, what, 82 by the time he'd run again? 77 now, yeah. Is he 77 now or 78? I think I think he's heading towards 78. But, you know, I mean, it's. Um, I don't think he's going to run for a second term. So the question is, is the person who's vice president going to be the next one in line for the nomination? Well, will he make it through the first term? That's the... Well, I, you know, he's not an unhealthy guy. He looks to be pretty healthy. Well, he know. seems to be a little uh, uh, forgetful at times. Well, he always was. You know, he always was. Uh, forgetful look. What? 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 Do you you know, you either get somebody who's slightly uh, addled, or you get somebody who's a psychopath. What do you want? <laughs> well, isn't anyone that runs for president probably a sociopath? <laughs> well, uh, no, I'm not saying sociopath. Psychopath. Psychopath. <laughs> There's a bit of a difference between a psychopath and a sociopath. A sociopath is just somebody you can't stand having around you. A psychopath is somebody you don't want to arm with a knife. <laughs> you know, and and he's, uh, you know, I mean, is there anything worse than Trump? Can you think of any president that's been worse? And we've had some we've hated, you know. 
There, I think there's been guys in the past, like they say Harding and people like that. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, this this guy is just you know, time time is up. It's time to go to another guy. You know, he had he he got the job, and he's been auditioning for his next term, and the audition hasn't gone very well. Well, have you heard the the theory do, was that he never really expected to win the first time? So. Well, yeah, I mean, you know, I, I kind of likened it to the movie The Producers, in which you <laughs> you do everything yeah. you can to not be, succeed, and then you do, and you're looking at each other, going, "Where did we go wrong? Or right, rather?" <laughs> you know, um, you know. So, uh, and and that's basically what happened to him. I think he was had all kinds of plans once he wasn't president uh, to go do, and uh, all that was and foiled. He, yeah, it was a big publicity run. To... But you know, it's also the stupidity of the American public, who once again says, "Oh, you know something? We need something who somebody who isn't a Washington insider." Well, maybe there's a reason why you want a Washington insider. Like, they're inside? Well, it didn't help that Hillary was probably one of the worst candidates in history. Well, she was a terrible candidate. Yeah. She was horrible. I mean, you know, I mean, I, I wish I could say uh, she lost fair and square. I mean, she didn't lose. I mean, she got three million more votes than Trump got. But she lost because we have this damn stupid electoral system. Which is True. which has been the bane of our existence, no question about it. You know. Well, you know who was the last uh, non-insider to be elected president was was uh, hmm. Jimmy Carter. Oh, oh, you're right. Well, yeah, yes and no. Well, we could also say Clinton. Uh, the reason is is that uh, because he because uh, Jimmy Carter was a governor, and uh, more governors become president than senators or congressmen or anybody yeah else. very few senators mostly governors uh, and the reason they they become well you had you had reagan he was a governor you had uh, clinton he was a governor carter governor um uh, bush governor all right one of the few senators to ever become president was uh, obama obama and jfk and jfk yeah so but um, carter was uh, he was so hated that he was uh, Ted Kennedy ran against him towards the end of his first term, remember? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. And uh, uh, it was, uh, you know, I mean, Carter was not a good president. He was, but he became a great ex-president, you know. Yeah, he did good after he got out of office. He was very admirable afterwards, after the fact. So, you know, but, but the reason why I think governors make the best presidents is because there's it's it's really only a small step to the presidency in what your duties are. Yeah, you're like a president of a state. So. You're the president of a state, right? And you're dealing with budgets, and you're dealing with the the police, uh, you know, the state troopers, and uh, I think the national guard in your area, and so on. And so when you become president, uh, it's it's not as high a learning curve. It's pretty much the same job, just more expansive duties. That's all. Mm-hmm. So you've trained for it. Senators, on the other hand, aren't trained for that. You know, they're trained to go in and negotiate and to bring home the pork to their uh, to their area and things like that. You know, so um, that's why we're. But, you know, and then well, there, and then there's guys like Trump who never were anything. It, you know. And and this is the first guy I can remember. Is there any other guy like this in our lifetime who came well, from the a, private sector and became president? I don't think anyone's ever done that. Yeah, there have been uh, there have been military people that had no political experience. Well, America, have we learned our lesson? <laughs> have we learned the lesson that you just don't go get yourself somebody from the private sector because he's a TV star? You know, uh, I mean, there are people in in states who run from the private sector for governor, but you don't ever find any. I can't remember anybody in my lifetime who was from the private sector. Can you? No, I think they've all been uh, the, the ones that weren't in politics were like from the military, like Eisenhower. Yeah, 
Yeah, and I think he's the only one that was from the military. That, and if you want to go back to Robert E. Uh, not Robert E. Lee, but Ulysses, Grant. Ulysses S. Grant. Yeah, who was a horrible president, apparently. No, oh, terrible, terrible. But aren't they all? <laughs> anyway, hey, listen, we've run out of time, Larry Bubbles Brown. Time flies when we're talking politics, hard-hitting politics. Hard-hitting politics here on our hard-hitting politics show. Not one joke came out of out of Larry Bubbles Brown, who we hire for <laughs> this job for the no last. No capable of writing them. <laughs> See you next week. See ya. Ladies and gentlemen, Larry Bubbles Brown. Now in our sixth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hey. See, I'm not frozen. No, I'm not frozen. No, no, no. We're not frozen. We're fresh. Anyway, how are you, ladies and gentlemen? Uh, I'm Alex Bennett. This is our little program. Uh, and uh, we, uh, we do it on Zoom. And if you want the Zoom address, you just go to gabnet.net. And over there at gabnet.net is uh, down in about the middle of the right-hand side. It says, click here to use Zoom. And you just click on that, and it'll take you right here. And then we'll pick up the uh, Zoom, and uh, I guess it's what we call it. We used to pick up the phone, right? I guess we pick up the Zoom. We pick up the Zoom, and we uh, talk to you, and you can join our citizen panel, which is not one, not two, not three, not four, not five, not six, not seven, not eight. Not well, it's any amount of people that we can get on the air. The more we can get, the better. Tonight's a feel-free night, so feel free or feel free to call. Uh, before we go any further, I just want to show you a graph. You know, the president the other day went on the, uh, on the tube. Uh, he does his little press conference every day. Well, really what it is, it's a campaign stop, okay? And uh, he came out with all these graphs that, you know, he showed graphs of things and how much things have gone up and down to the COVID, and he's trying to prove something, but we can't figure out what the hell it uh, it has to has to say the, those graphs. <clears throat> so I thought I'd throw a graph up tonight, sent to me uh, by our governor, uh, who I I get stuff from. You know, uh, I get a, a nightly review of what's going on. By the way, ten dead uh, yesterday. But what happened was the president, as you know, kept saying the reason why the numbers have gone up of cases of COVID is because we do more testing. Well, New York City did more testing. Let me see if I can get the statistic here. More testing than they've ever done in one day. They did 87,900 COVID tests, okay? Watch what happens when you give more tests. See that red line? That's the amount of cases of COVID on a particular place in time. All right, see how high it was? Now you see we got to doing more testing and more testing and more testing and more testing. And the more testing we did, the COVID started going down. So this completely disproves the president's theory that the more you test, the more cases you get. No, in this case, if you've got people who don't have COVID, and if you've managed to help stamp it out, this graph just goes down and down and down while the amount of tests go up and up and up. So his whole thesis, thesis, to say that about Trump, to say a thesis is absolutely ridiculous. But uh, anyway, uh, that's, uh, the, see, there's no truth to that. Anyway, let me start getting some people, admit some people into the, uh, into the uh, 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 r room here, into the, uh, and let me see here. Who have we got? Let, let's see here. We got, uh, oh, well, look, we've got, uh, we've got uh, Howard out <laughs> there in Hawaii. Uh, we've got uh, um, uh, Robert, who's over there in New Jersey. And, yeah. uh, and a beautiful sunset we're looking at is coming from Marin County, or not Marin County. Where are you exactly, Brian? You're in Palo Alto or somewhere down around there? 
San Jose Amadin Valley. Yeah, San Jose Amadin Valley. Look at that sun. That's a California sunset. I know. But, and it doesn't do it justice, but there's clouds all filling the sky, so it's going to be all red tonight. So well, it's like 88 degrees right now, so yeah, it's going to be beautiful. Yeah, well, he uh, and, Howard's got a better one than you, but that's... A blue screen. That's a green screen in back of him. So fake yeah. news. Fake. fake news. Mine's beautiful. <laughs> beautiful sunset. More beautiful. Very, very beautiful. And uh, there goes a car. Uh, yes. <laughs> so anyway. where's your car? <laughs> yeah. So I went to the de- I went to the dentist today for part two of my uh, my uh, uh, root canal. It was worse than the first one. Uh, well, I mean, you know what? As I remember, I, I don't remember root canals ever being this arduous. I've found them being boring and dull and kind of got to keep your mouth open all the time. But, man, it just got worse and worse. Today it was again. It was I was in that chair, literally, and she was working most of the time today for two hours. And that wasn't the... I didn't feel any pain except when she told me that my part of the cost of this thing with my insurance is fifteen hundred dollars. That's painful. That was that was painful. <laughs> oh man, that got me where I live. But I looked at my Vanguard and it's right back where it was at the beginning of COVID. So you know, I guess I can afford it. I guess well, I've got to I got to afford it. She started it without telling me how much it was going to cost. You know, if I were going to figure out if, if she said that. The cost of uh, doing that is three thousand dollars, and so my insurance pays for about half, or maybe more. Maybe it'll come out better. But she said, "Count on fifteen hundred. You know, I'm, I guess she's saying that because if it's down, then she goes, "See, we got you a deal." Uh, but anyway, I figure it it, it was only going to cost me okay to have this gap in my teeth back here filled with a implant out of my pocket sixteen hundred dollars for my part of it okay uh and that's including the crown and everything all right now to root canal this tooth costs three thousand dollars or fifteen hundred dollars out of my pocket why didn't they just have why didn't they just have them pull the tooth and put in an implant? It would have been about the same cost, okay? But they'll go, oh no, we can't do that. You got to try and save the tooth. What do you mean save the tooth? You killed the root. You didn't save the tooth. <laughs> you know, it's not that easy a deal. You know, so yep. So I went through that, and and it was it was uh, it was anguishing, uh, but. Uh, she, she she was slightly better today. Although when she told me fifteen hundred bucks, I went fifteen hundred bucks. You know, I've got insurance. Doesn't it uh, tell you what you got to charge for that and so on? And she says, Oh no, we charge what we charge, and then they pay. That's not how I got it before. Supposedly they tell them how much it's worth. You know, so that's based on how much they'll pay. It's it's weird. It's really weird. So I don't know. So I'll be out fifteen hundred bucks, I guess. A partial crown, isn't that what Meghan Markle has, pretty much? Yeah, a partial crown. Yeah, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah. Um, uh, and uh, what was it? Um, uh, so I, I did that, and uh, then I took the bus home, which, <clears throat> which I call my COVID test. Uh, but uh, everybody had masks on. And they were a little closer than six feet, but if you've got your mask on, right, that's why you wear the mask is because you can't social distance in certain circumstances. So I took the bus home after taking an agonizing ride in Lyft because the guy wouldn't go the way I wanted to go. He wanted to go the way he wanted to go. And I still gave him a fucking tip. Why do I do that? <laughs> you know. And You're supporting people who need money. And of course, Jobs. you know, I, I, as I said uh, on my facebook page and i said last night on this program covid has become an excuse for inefficiency you know i mean i kind of agree there's no reason why you can't be efficient and have covid at the same time no i i i'm working from home so it's harder no it's not i see my wife working here every day She, she goes to work sitting here she gets most of the job done she doesn't tell her bosses well you know we got covid here you know that that 
but I can't I can't do everything I normally do. She, she gets about 75 percent of the stuff done, and then she goes in once a week to take care of the other 25 percent. So, but anyway. Um, so, gee, we're free of fill tonight. Isn't that nice? I feel like you ever you ever go swimming naked? Yeah. Yeah. You know that feeling you get about yep. just the freedom of swimming. Yep. I feel like I'm swimming naked tonight. Yeah. No fill. No fill. I'm, <laughs> you know. I knew you'd say that. Yeah. No. I I I I feel like I'm I'm swimming naked. And uh, well, I mean, I'm not. If I were, you'd probably all be vomiting out there. So. Yeah. Free balling. Free balling, yeah. But anyway, so um, uh, let me see here. That yeah, that was my day. Oh yeah, yeah. Remember yesterday I was telling you everything I I did, everything technically kept going wrong and wrong and wrong and wrong. <laughs> so last night after the show, I have to post the show to YouTube. I, I put they, they automatically post it, the live version. But then I have a recorded version. I put that up too. Uh, and. Uh, I go to do it, and they've changed the whole thing, the whole way you do it. And, and, and it's not as good as the old way you did it, okay? And it's taking forever to figure it out. And then I look at the very bottom. There's a little thing right at the bottom, and it says, go to classic. So I could click on it, uh -huh. go to the old version, and do it that way. But, you know, it was just, it, on top of everything else, that was just one more thing. And um, it seems everything, am I, do you get the feeling everything's breaking down? I mean, yeah. huh? I do. Yeah. I heard a good joke today. Yeah. What is the boundaries of stupidity? I don't know. Canada what I, and Mexico. Well, Canada and Mexico, yeah. <laughs> no, well, I mean, I, I just, you know, it's just like uh, everything I use uh, just seems to not be efficient. You know, I couldn't use my phone because my uh, VPN somehow Nord was down. I didn't know that, but that's why my phone was having problems connecting to the internet. Uh, you know, things like that. And then, uh, uh, you know, two of my, uh, you know, GoDaddy usually is never any problems. It was a problem the other day. Uh, my ca Canadian server, which is always a problem, uh, uh, it was a problem, uh, you know, but it just seems everything's breaking down. And the excuse, oh, it's the COVID. Really? Okay, it's the COVID. Do you think we're spoiled by technology also? Because my my email for work is giving me a problem. It says not responding, everything goes dim for like 30 seconds. Yeah. But you know how, how we're used to information so quickly that if it stops and get waits ten seconds, you get frustrated because it's like, geez, why is this taking so long? Yeah, but yeah. Um, oh, that's what I just looked. My I was frozen here for a second, but I it's just uh, okay. All right, we'll just. Uh, it's it's the same notion by which we used to get like five or six channels when I was a kid, and it was always something interesting on. Now yeah. you got 600 goddamn channels yeah. and, and you say it can't find the thing. Yeah. So progress isn't always linear, you know, like. <laughs> well, you know what it was when you had only three channels, maybe there was always three channels plus uh, the educational channel. Yes, right. And uh, there was an independent channel. Yeah. Okay, usually. So you had five channels, basically, maybe six. Hey. It, 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 it was bliss because really you had to choose from a rather limited menu. Yes. You know, I hate it when I go, I hate to say it, but I hate it when I go into a restaurant like diners are a good example of that, where you go in and there's a literal book they hand you with everything, you know, and I don't know how they keep all this food around and how they make it up. I have a theory that they only have three dishes, and these were all variances of that. those three yeah, dishes. Yeah. <laughs> There's but, a great book about this. Uh, it deals with, with the paralysis of choice. I forget mm -hmm, the name of the yeah. gentleman that wrote it. And he talks about the fact that when we were younger, you went to a store to buy a pair of jeans, and effectively... Mm -hmm. What happened was they had one pair of jeans, one style. Mm -hmm. You chose your style, went home, and you were satisfied. 
And now there are, you know, boot cut, this cut, that cut, this color, stonewashed, all like this. And what's in effect happened, according to him, is that now the onus on the fact that you don't like the jeans when you get them home is on you. Because now you've made a bad choice. And so in effect, it's like the store has lost their responsibility anymore because you're paralyzed by, you know, what should I do? Well, I, I, I think you're making a very good point. I mean, uh, I often said that I really wish I were stupid. And the reason I wished I were stupid is I would go in, I would look at a menu and go, I'll have the hamburger. You know, yeah. you, have far, you, can, you have far less stress in your life if you're stupid because you're not going to sit there and make, oh, what should I eat? So they have found, for instance, the, 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 these fast food places, their, um, their way of operating is limited choice. You know? Yeah, you know, who's successful is In-N-Out is like that. You go in there, they don't have a lot of selection. Hamburgers, a yeah. shake, and what else? A soda, maybe, if you want it? Yeah, that's about it. Fries. Fries, yeah. Fries. Thought... yeah what? They don't have chicken sandwiches there. I don't think they have salads or anything like that. Just just right. hamburgers. Right, right. And they're fucking, they're, they're successful. Yeah. So, sure. I mean, um, I just think that having a lot of choices, uh, as I say, when I go into a diner and I've got this menu with, like, every. I mean, how much, you know what I'm talking about, Robert, because you've got those diners in New Jersey. I don't know if you know what I'm talking about out in California or Hawaii, but these diners. Oh, we got them. Yeah. I mean, just pages after pages after page. You got 10 different salads on one page, 10 different forms of chicken on another page. You've got all the desserts. And you, you're looking and you go, I can't figure out what I want. You know, yeah. too many choices. And, and it all yeah. sucks, too, usually. You know? The yeah. book even goes further. It's not just things you buy. Mm -hmm. um, he was describing the fact that in the old days, you went to a doctor and you described your symptom. And he said, well, you've got this, this. You need to take this medicine or that surgery. Yeah. These days, you go to a doctor and the doctor says, well, here are ways you can approach this. You can do A, you can do B, you can do C. It's up to you. Mm -hmm. And in effect, you've paid him for his expertise, but he's kind of wiggled out of the responsibility. And now the choice is on you. And you're the person least likely to be in a position to make that decision. Yeah. You know, so the whole thing is kind of a shifting of responsibility by giving you choice. Yeah. Um, but I, I, I'm beginning to hate choice. You know, I'm, I'm beginning to hate all the things that I have available to me. Because that's just one more thing that's going to break. Either it's the TV set, or it's the phone, or it's the computer, or it's the light, you know, or, and I can go on and on and on. Um, you know, and, and it's, um, um, I don't know. I, I, I'm, I'm okay, so I'm getting depressed. What the hell? I don't want to depress you guys. Every yeah. night I come on here and I gripe. That's all I do lately. It's the old man in me. I gripe and I gripe and I noticed. gripe. Huh? We hadn't noticed. Yeah. Uh, Charlie yeah. Wallace is trying to get on, and I'm, I hit the admit, and he's not coming on here. Mm. Oh. Oh, well, here he there comes. He there he comes. Yeah, he had to do something on his end. There he is. There's Charlie. Say hi, Charlie. Yeah, hi, Charlie. You know, you know where Hi, Charlie. We, you know where we don't have freedom of choice. I mean, you know, they try, as you say, you go into the Gap, and there's not one kind of gene, and they're just in different sizes. There are twenty different genes in yep. different sizes. And then when you find the gene you like, they don't have it in your size. They don't have your size. Yeah, of course. So yeah. uh, you know, uh, but um, what happens with politics? We only get two candidates to choose from. Yeah, right. Really. You know, I got Biden and Trump. Right. That's it. Oh, yeah, I know there are those other parties, you know. I'm, I could vote for Kanye West if I wanted to. Boy, would that be, that, that's the biggest ex example of throwing your vote away, isn't it? Exactly. Pat Paulson was maybe a better choice. Yeah, yeah. And he was doing it as a joke. Yeah, Kanye course. West isn't. 
No. Well, Kanye West is doing it uh, because it's meant to hurt Biden. And he's admitted mm -hmm. it. He's out to hurt Biden. As though Who's the guy who uh, was in Texas who was like the third party? Perot. Perot, yeah. Yeah. What did he have? Did he have 10%? Yeah, some 12 or oh, about yeah, yeah, yeah. And at one, Well, yeah. I don't know in the final that he had that much, but I know at one point he had like 20%, and then he did, he quit. He quit the race. But then he got back in for some reason. Well, then he it? decided he got had buyer's remorse or something, and he got yeah. back in again, and then it was too late, and everybody went, look, if you can't make up your mind, if you want to be president of the United States or not, then we, we don't, we're not interested, you know. We're not buying what you have to sell. Uh, I like to. Yeah. Uh, um, the, um, uh, I, you know, I watch, I, I hate to come on here every night and grouse about Donald Trump. Yeah, but, but why not? you know, uh, he, he makes it so easy. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Uh, and today I was watching him. This, he can't read. Sure. And, and he, you know, I mean, how can I put it? He looks, when he's reading these speeches, like a kid asking the four questions on at, at Passover, okay? And he really doesn't want to, and he doesn't read too well. Why is this night different from all other nights? So he just wants to get through it. And that's how yeah. he reads this stuff. Yeah. And then yeah. all these pr so-called press conferences are turning into campaign speeches. Of course. And they shouldn't be. Not in the White House. No. That's considered a no-no. And, I mean, the, the man is so stupid, I, can, I now realize how he won. There are enough stupid people in America who thinks he's smart. Yeah. You know, in, in the land of the blind, the one-eyed man is king. Did yep. you see the guy that asked him why he keeps, you know, what, what he said something like, what do you think about what the American people think of you after all the lies you've been telling them for the past four years? And he yeah. just goes, he just goes, next. Uh, yeah. <laughs> he goes, what? Yeah. what? Next. He repeated it again. <laughs> well, I don't know. I don't know how those press people hold huh? themselves back from just going, unloading on him. I know. <laughs> You know, because, I mean, what a waste of time. There, He's holding a press conference, and you're going to get nothing out of that press conference, mm -hmm. you know? And today he was talking about, oh, he was, he was the big peacemaker in, in the Mideast, oh, right? Oh, yeah. He got Israel and the Arab Emirates together. Yeah, big fucking Do you know how Emirates. difficult? I could have done that one. Yeah. You know, because the Arab Emirates, I mean, if... if uh, if Bree were here, he'd tell us all about it. He lived in Dubai for the longest time. All they want to do is be happy with the rest of the world so they can make money, and that's it, mm -hmm. you know? Um, so, I mean, um, uh, and he was making such a big deal out of it, and they, they decided they were going to call it the Abraham Accord after Abraham because he was the basis for three different religions, one of which is Islam. Uh, because Ab Abraham and uh, his son Ishmael were the ones who built the Kaaba in Mecca, mm -hmm. that big block. I mean, they supposedly, it, you know, mm -hmm. it's all, it's all fairy tales, okay? But um, it's all uh, in the book. And, you and just his, read it. his reply was, "Well, I really wanted to be called the Trump Accord." <laughs> yeah. What a shock! And everybody laughed. The only thing was, he was serious. Yeah, yeah. you know. Did you hear him talk about the Nobel Peace Prizes today? No. no. Yeah, he says, oh, if, <laughs> if if they would give them out honestly, I'd have a few by now. Or he says, oh, yeah. I'd have a few if they gave them out honestly. Not yeah. just one. Yeah, he's a few. Yeah, I think, actually, I think he said a bunch. Yeah. He said that twice. Well, <laughs> that's more than a few. <laughs> how many of you are planning yeah, to vote? If they give them out honestly. How many of you are planning to vote by mail? Me. Huh? I am. Well, yeah, I, you, I drop it off. They mail it to me, but I drop it off to make sure it gets. I, I drop it off too. Yeah, I yeah. drop it off. Well, yeah, I, you, you know, can do that. if they yeah, had too. the whole system in place, they'd have these <clears throat> boxes at like uh, you know police stations and so on, where you just throw your ballot in there, and you know it's not really mail in. It's just you drop by and give them your give them your ballot. Yep. Uh, but he today in the last couple of days 
Well, today he said he wasn't going to fund the, the uh, post office. Yeah, the post office. Yeah. Uh, because they're going to, like, carry the mail-in ballots. Yeah. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Aren't you trying to stack the deck here? Of course. You know. Of course, yeah. And where yeah. he's stupid, really stupid is, do you know, of the two <laughs> parties, which one has the most people that send in mail-in ballots? Republicans. Republicans. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, Charlie. <laughs> yeah, Trump doesn't seem to realize that ballots are not the only thing that the mail carries. Ah. I mean, <laughs> I get all my prescriptions through the mail, so what are you going to do? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I can't get the drugs I need to live? Yeah. All those other senior citizens out there? And servicemen, who 100% yeah. of active servicemen receive medication <clears throat> needed through the mail. You know, I mean, uh, the, the, what he's trying to do is he's trying to set the table for losing and then being able to say, well, I didn't lose and I want to fight it because of the, of the mail-in. And then they'll go to the Supreme Court and they'll want to get a reading on whether mail-in ballots are legal. This could go on forever because he doesn't want to leave. And he knows he, there's a very good chance he's going to be booted out of there come election day. Yeah. And, and, and then today and, he was he what? was talking about the reasons why people are against opening the schools is because that's where the voting booths are and they won't be able to get to them. What? Really? <laughs> that's what he said. We didn't. The reason why people are so against opening the schools is because that's where the voting booths are. So then they'll be forced to do it by mail. I yeah. was like, oh my god. Right. Yeah, yes, Charlie. They had no problem opening the schools for our runoff vote in, yeah. in, in uh, mm. July last month. Yeah, opening up the school for a vote is yeah. uh, is very it's simple. It. It's, you know, yeah, it's totally different. It's got nothing to do with that. Yeah. Yep. You just make shit up. Yeah. <laughs> well, what he's doing is he's making the excuse he's going to use when he doesn't win, saying, "Well, I actually really won the uh, the the uh, the." Uh, the Election has been rigged by the Democrats. <laughs> you know. yeah. Did you see that that freak that got um, won the primary in Georgia? The oh, QAnon yeah. lady. The QAnon yeah. lady. Yeah. You, you, remember, you, you remember that movie uh, Deliverance? Mm -hmm. That that district is where she won. Where those guys were. <laughs> what is Q, what is QAnon? Explain it to me. I forget. It's it's uh, um it started on the internet on like these uh, on. Uh, on like, like these uh, message boards, and it's, it's supposedly some guy named Q is sending these messages that uh, you know he's like an insider, and he knows that Trump is fighting this cabal of Democrat uh, child molesters and pedophiles, yeah. and uh, you, you, you know, in, in the PizzaGate, the, the deal with the pizza. Oh, okay, all yeah. right, all right, yeah. In the basement that didn't even exist. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, there wasn't a basement in that building. But they see, that shit. Huh? we make a big deal about Antifa where nobody can identify a single Listen, motherfucker that belongs. Robert, but Robert, you and I are of a political bent that if we knew where Antifa had a meeting, we'd be there I'd right join. now. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I would here. join. Yeah, where, where do I send my money? Where do I get my card? You know? A friend of mine posted a picture of guys getting off uh, boats for D-Day and said, here's the original Antifa. Yeah. He said right. he's absolutely right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Antifa uh, was a group that was created, I think, in the 1800s, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. And, anti-fascist. And, and, and they were yeah. anti-fascist. Right. And uh, so what's so wrong about being anti-fascist? But in the meantime, QAnon has 14 people running for Congress this coming November. And there's over a million registered QAnon members. And yet, you know, you, you'll you never hear that on Fox, ever. Wow. Yeah. Well, he's, well, he's, he's they, said, they shot up the pizza parlor. He's said, no, yeah. no, no Antifa person has ever shot up anything. By the and way, there's a very good documentary on PBS on Frontline about uh, what's his name? The guy, uh, the guy who has the, the, the internet show. Uh, Oh yeah, spread, Alex, Alex Jones. Alex oh, Alex, Jones. Yeah, I saw and it's, that. that it, good. Yeah, it's really good. All about Alex Jones, and they they bring up the Pizzagate thing, which Alex Jones promoted. Yeah. 
Yeah. yeah. You know, he said, oh, yeah, she's uh, they're running a sex ring out of the uh, basement of this pizza parlor, and Hillary is running it, and so on. And this guy goes over and starts shooting up the place, but he can't find a basement. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You know, Alex Jones is from Austin. Yeah. Is yeah. Uh, you know, so, I mean, I just, I just, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm at my wits end with Theory. all of this, you know, but he is setting That's it up. Scary. We are going to have such a mess. You know, remember last time he said uh, the election's going to be rigged uh, and, uh, if, if, you know, they're, they're setting it up to, to, to have it rigged and, uh, uh, you know, and then he won. So I guess it was rigged. Yeah. 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 You know, but he was protesting. Right. He was setting up everything he could by uh, to excuse why he lost, that he didn't really lose. Mm -hmm. You know. And I'm sorry, you can't you can't play that kind of game. And what I'm wondering is where where are the Democrats? Why why aren't they suing Donald Trump and the federal government for not giving funds to the post office because they don't want the post office to be able to pick up and deliver uh, mail-in ballots. I mean, come on. It's such an obvious ploy. Um, it's criminal. I think he could be prosecuted for this. Well, I think some... That is against the law. I it's mean, they should, go, they, they, should go, go, they should go to court and get an injunction against him, an injunction for not giving money to the post office. You know, mm -hmm. if the post office needs it's only $25 billion, I say only $25 billion, but compared to what we spend in a given year, that's, yeah. that's chump change. All they need is $25 billion to make sure they can accurately deliver the mail in great numbers. Okay. And, and by the way, the mail for mail and ballots, uh, Charlie, you do mail in, right? Yeah. How many weeks before the election do you mail it in? You can mail it in like five weeks before the election. Yeah, how, how, how early do you do it? I do it as soon as I get it. So, in other words, there's not going to be this big rush of mail with ballots in it to the, to the, uh, to the ballot people uh, because, yeah. you know, most people don't wait to the last minute on this. They go, hey, I can vote now. I have vote right now and just mail it off. You know, I've already made up my mind. He's also worried about that part of it. Mm -hmm. that, that at least if he if he doesn't do mail in, there won't be this momentary photograph of what people are feeling at a particularly given time, and he feels he's got then enough time to fight this whole thing. Yeah, he's got his October surprise. He wants to don't want you mailing in your ballot before the October surprise. Yeah, right. Uh. It tells me that he's on plan Q by now. You know, like plan A was to run on the economy, okay? Plan B was to run on how well he handled the COVID crisis. Well, well. plan C, well, now we're talking about fucking Kanye West. We're yeah. talking about slowing down the mail. Does that sound like a confident winner to you? No, it sounds like somebody's no. got loser's breath. Course. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, it's it's. Uh, I I even know Republicans. I think are voting for Biden this year. I do. Yeah. 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 I do. I mean, just simply, it, it isn't so much they like Biden or they like the Democrats. They just want to get rid of this guy that's in the. Uh, your light went out again, there, uh, John. He's got his light on a clapper. I, well, I, I, I don't. It's on some kind of a timer or like a motion thing. You know? well, why so, don't you just plug it straight into the wall? It is yeah. straight into the wall, but the, the lamp itself is on some kind of a timer. It's got it's like a timer thing. It's a motion thing. If it doesn't see any motion in the room, it goes off. Oh, really? Like so you got to keep yeah. doing a hula dance or something yeah, like gotta that? Yeah, i got to get up and go like this. Yeah. yeah. Okay, we're being joined. Okay, you get your lamp at Walmart. Everybody cool it. We're being joined by Tony. There we go. Uh, yeah, there he is. There he is. Hi, Tony. Hi. Hi, hey, how you doing? Mm, the humidity gave me a headache today. I just took a time a little bit. What gave you a headache? The humidity outside. It was just bothering me. It wasn't bad today. In fact, I went out. I, bad at you know, all. You know, I, I didn't have a problem today with the humidity. It's getting a little humid now. Yeah, you know what? Maybe it was just, you know what? I kind of couldn't get to sleep, and then it was hot. It was like, you know what? I just I get cranky sometimes in the yeah. summer. Then do you know? Do you notice what's missing on tonight's show? 
<laughs> Where is he? <laughs> yeah. He's out taking. I was watching. I'm this. so happy. He's taking a gun lesson. Oh. Yeah. For, for his AR-15. I hope he doesn't. And as I said last night, what does it take to learn how to use an AR-15? Point, pull, Brains. trigger. His obsession with guns is scary. Yeah, yeah. Use it like a polar opposite. <laughs> Where's he going to shoot that thing? I have Hopefully no idea. It's not loaded. <laughs> By the way, I just noticed something. Do you notice that on Zoom, when's the last time you remember somebody freezing up? Yeah. You know? That's great. Or, 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 or having problems with their picture or whatever. No, it's really, it's terrific. You yep. know? It's really great. Um, so anyway, so I'm, you know. And Back to it, Republicans who may vote for uh, Biden, it reminds me of my father's beer test. My father didn't drink at all, but he used to talk about what he called the beer test. He used to look at the two candidates and ask himself the question, could I sit and have a beer with this guy? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? Now, yeah. Donald yeah. Trump, mm, I can't picture that. Joe Biden, I could sit and have a beer and talk about bullshit with him. It doesn't even have to be politics. He's just a regular guy. You could talk to him about, about sports. You could talk to him about the weather. And you feel like well, you'd be with just a dude. What I said was his greatest strength is going to be with uh, the... Um, uh, just uh, the average working man, yeah. you know, out there, the laborer, so on. I mean, he, he has that common touch with those people. Trump, on the other hand, would like him, people to believe that he, he has, those are his people, but those are people he never would hang out with in his yeah. life, nope. you know? Uh, I think instinctively Biden would know how to talk to them, mm -hmm. you know? Um, Yes. Did you ever hear this thing that Trump has no friends? Yeah. Hmm. Oh, I, I can believe that. I, yeah. I, I, can, can I can't imagine who would be his friend. No. Yeah. He and says Kim Jong-un is his friend. Right. Yeah. <laughs> think about it. Yeah. Maybe Dennis Rodman? Yeah. <laughs> no, I don't think Rodman even I likes him. No. I mean, it's just it's amazing. He cheats on golf. Yeah. He cheats on golf with people he plays with. So yeah. those can't yeah. be your friends. You don't cheat like that with your friends. You no. don't get away with it. No. No. So, you know, I mean, I just, I, I'm tired. I'm so tired of talking about him. I just want a president that I don't have to talk about for a week. Yeah. I have, I want a president that is so not in your face right. that I could do this show and get completely bored with doing it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, that they're, well, I'm not going to do a show tonight. There's nothing to talk about. Boy, wouldn't that be nice <laughs> if there yep. wasn't anything to talk about? Or we could, you know, talk about our embroidery if we want to. Because yeah. I know all <laughs> you guys embroider. could say what? is I'm going on vacation for a, a week. Yeah. I'll let the vice president run. The yeah, party. I mean, every day he's had to dominate the news. Yeah. And, you know, every day he holds a press conference. And it's not a press conference. It's a campaign rally. Mm -hmm. And he's doing such a bad job of talking about his position. I mean, you can expect that he's going to say, well, you know, I, I don't want to give money to the Democratic states. What? You know, they're just as broke as the Republican states are now. Oh, because the, the Republicans didn't handle the money. The Democrats didn't handle their money right. Mm -hmm. Wait a minute. Here in New York, we ran, we we took care of our money and used it right. The only thing is, we ran out because there were so many people who were sick. You know, and I showed that graph earlier. I don't know if you saw it. Mm -hmm. Yep. But it's a graph that Cuomo uh, put. Uh, I'll put it up here for a second so that uh, my uh, the audience who didn't see it earlier when I was talking about it can uh, see what I'm talking about. Uh, it, it, it's it's simply a uh, it's simply a a, a graph that the, the red part of the graph is uh, let's see here that is the amount of COVID cases throughout the entire period of time that we've had the COVID problem, and then the uh, that's the red line which you see goes up and really gets high. It's up there around uh, 70k for infected people. That's for infected people. Uh, based on testing 
And the blue line is the amount of tests that we do, which culminate with 71,721, and I think it was something like 8,000, over 8, 80,000 yesterday. Meanwhile, the, the amount of people who have COVID or test positive has gone down and down and down until it's almost negligible compared. It's less than 0.8%. Um, so this whole idea that Trump has, that the more you test, the more infections you'll find, is absolutely wrong, and that graph proves it. And that's a graph that does prove something, as opposed to those bullshit graphs he was showing at his press conference yeah. the other day, which didn't make sense at all. I don't know what those were supposed to be. Did you hear, Alex, not to change subjects, yeah. but did you hear what the Virginia mayor posted on Facebook? The what? The Virginia mayor. Uh, Being governor? Uh, no, the mayor. He said that on his Facebook Well, there is no mayor of Virginia, some city in Virginia, right? Well, it says the Virginia mayor I'm reading, is facing calls for his resignation over a Facebook post. Which well, Virginia Mayo oh, was an actress. I remember her. Oh. No, he's, uh, it's the town of Lurie. He's 5,000 people in the Okay, town. so what did he say? He said that he posted on his Facebook page, which he did, that Joe Biden picked Angel Jemima as his running mate. Oh my, oh, my God. God. oh, my God. Oh, my God. You know, if you were to call anybody Aunt Jemima, okay, at least yeah. have someone that looks reasonably like Aunt Jemima. <laughs> you know, I mean, if, it's just I a race. if, if his vice presidential candidate was Oprah, okay, you're a little closer, all right? Yeah. But, I mean, come on, Camilla Harris? Boy, I mean, yeah, come on, I'd do her. You know, yeah. what a gorgeous woman, you know. Uh, but, I mean, also intelligent, smart, accomplished, everything. She's perfect, you know. I want to see her go up in the debate with what's-his-name. Uh, <laughs> he'll have to get, mo he'll have to get mother's permission. Yeah. <laughs> yeah that's, right. <laughs> that's right. To be in the same room with a woman, right? right? Oh, oh, yes, yeah. yes. You're right, John. Right, right, right. <laughs> By the way, I, do you know the most inventive thing I've ever seen in this whole coronavirus thing? Uh, to overcome the obstacles of the coronavirus was I watched this week America's Got Talent. Now, I don't know if you're familiar with the show, but they've got an audience, mm -hmm. and they've got four panelists, and then people get up on the stage, and they do their little acts, and then people criticize them, and whatever, right? And I went, how are they going to do this show now? They don't. They can't have an audience because that would be horrible. Be right. That, that would be terrible. Uh, what are you going to do? Uh, 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 and they did it. They, yeah. to begin with, the this distance between the stage and the judges is appropriate, so yeah. they're not going to be close to each other that way. Yeah. And for an audience. They had people call in and zoom in, and they had these huge screens with like 150 people on a Zoom screen, mm. all applauding and cheering and doing all those things. I thought, and, and the, that, uh, huh? The big, the big screen that they're showing also is huge. Yes, and they and they have their performers out on the Universal lot doing their <laughs> acts on various in various locations. Uh, very inventive way, you know. I mean, I I've always been I've been proud of us during this thing of how we've adapted, but they really I I couldn't figure out how they were going to do that show, and they found a way to do it, and it it worked, you know, it worked. So, uh, and Heidi Klum was wearing almost nothing last night. So. Uh, you know. oh she she held up for her age, huh? She's yeah, but they had to uh, no Simon Cowell. He had yeah, he a, a, accident. an accident. An accident yeah. broke his back. Yeah. In like two places. Wow. Jeez. Yeah. Yeah. So, I don't know if you consider that important, folks, but it's more important than Donald Trump. That's for goddamn yeah. sure. <laughs> you know, I mean, I just, I think he is going to face, I hope he faces such a rout in the election that he has no excuse why he didn't win. You know, 
You know, they people. Oh, they cheated. They can't be that I lost by ten million. Yeah. You know, those are ten million stolen votes. Those are fake ballots. I'm sorry. Don't allow him to make a case, folks. Everybody, yeah. vote for Biden whether you like him or not, because no matter, you know, he's a decent enough guy. He's not going to like bankrupt this country, you yeah. know. And he might even. Right. He's going to have the toughest job any president has ever had because he's going to have to solve our, uh, our standing in the rest of the world. The good news is, too, is, you know, whatever you feel about Joe, there's an outstanding chance that he'll surround himself with really outstanding individuals yeah. who recently served in the Obama administration and got yeah. us out yeah. of... 2008's recession toward depression, you know, the right, crisis. Right. And, and so he'll listen to him. These very same, yeah, exactly that, you know, he'll have the last person in the room give him the advice. Well, he, he said needs. the last person in the room will be exactly Her. who the last person in the room was under yeah. Obama, the vice president. Mm -hmm. He said, and if she disagrees with me or she doesn't think I'm doing the right thing, I want her to tell me. What a concept. And I went, Whoa, that would be a new way of running the country, wouldn't it be, huh? Yeah. yeah. You know? Just am am amazing. I think they've done everything right so far. Mm -hmm. You know? I, you know, it was, it was a fait accompli that Trump was going to go after Camilla Harris. Mm -hmm. Today, she, he's come out with, she's mean. Yeah. yeah. Good. Because because of the way she acted in those confirmation hearings for what's his name for I think I she know. can take him. Uh, oh yeah, but I mean, uh, it, 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 she it, he called her mean. Be why? Because she asked questions of of the Supreme Court. The guy was wanted to be Supreme Court justice, yeah. and wanted to get Nasty. at the truth. That's being Nasty. mean. Nasty. 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 I mean, I, I, great you know, I think, and I think it's, uh, I think it's a tribute to Biden that after what she did to him in the debate, that he still made her his vice, pre, her, the vice presidential uh, nominee. Uh, I, I think he did that. I think he did that partially to prove what a good guy he is, rather than holding grudges, yeah. like some people we know. <laughs> you know, I mean, it's just, yeah. it's amazing. It's just amazing. Yeah. Yes, John. You know, what I, you know what I didn't understand was what, why didn't the Republicans, when when that lady came out and said that Kavanaugh, you know, uh, molested her or whatever, why didn't the, why didn't the, the Republicans just say, okay, fuck it, we'll give you the benefit of the doubt. There's another buddy. We can get some other. Yeah, we can get somebody you know, else. Uh, yeah, you know, it's it, the same know? reason I asked the question, and this is, a, I think, a very important question, and that is. It would have been great of Donald Trump. I mean, if I were advising him and telling him what to say, um, well, I'd tell him anything would make him lose. But basically, I would say to him, when if he said, "What do I say about Camilla or Kamala?" I said, I would say, "Say what a great choice they made, and that she will be an admirable foe, worthy opponent, worthy yeah. opponent, and leave it yeah. at that." Yep. Yeah. Number one, it will drive the Democrats crazy because they'll yeah. think they made a mistake. Yeah. <laughs> you know, um, that's, that's the thing. If they would have, if they would have done that with Kavanaugh, and then the next person came up, and then they found some shit on him, then they say, "Hey, wait a second. You, you What's the odds of you, two you, of us?" You only get know? one. You only get one pass at that. Yeah. 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 Right, right. But uh, you know, I, you know, I, it, Democrats are are. Uh, good thinkers, I think. I think Republicans, and I hate to say this, are not really good at thinking these things out. I don't think they're very good at making judicious decisions. Uh, yeah. You know, I think they... they I I think the whole they, party's been taken over by fucking psychos, you know? In, in well, I, I, I feel sorry for the Republicans, and I'm sorry that the Republicans aren't a better party. Because I do think, in a, since we have a system in which there are really only two parties, no matter what anybody wants to say, because no other party really has a fighting chance, 
Uh, well, that's what that's what makes me laugh a little bit. And yeah. I, I don't want to talk, you know, when, when he's not here, but that's what makes me laugh a little about Phil whenever he knocks MSNBC, because in the morning you've got Joe Scarborough, who is a Republican. In the afternoon, you've got Nicole Wallace, who is a Republican. Yeah. They constantly, you know, feature Steve Schmidt. Right now on the TV above my head is Michael Steele, yeah. who was once the yeah. RNC chairman yeah, sure. yeah. you know you've got right. uh, david jolly who is a representative from florida that's constantly on and he's talking down on trump so you know it kind of makes me laugh uh, msnbc for being this bastion of liberalism features a lot so of republicans steel steel just be steel just became part of the lincoln project yeah he did yeah yeah yeah, yeah. He did. what does that mean uh, the, the Lincoln Project is a, a bunch of Republicans who don't want Trump to get elected, and so they've been oh. doing these ads about one a day. They're great. They right? are just yeah. great. If you, great. You just go online and t just put in Lincoln oh, Project, right. and you'll you'll yeah. see. Who did you say just became one? Huh? Michael Steele. Michael Steele. Michael Steele. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. I mean, uh, it, Please, you know, right? but but That's but I, I believe that in a in what is essentially a two party system, you need both parties to be really good and active and yeah. smart. And yeah. all of that. And they we, they used to have a good Republican Party. You know, it was, yeah. uh, it I think prior actually to Reagan, I think it started to fall yeah. apart after Reagan yep. or, or maybe during Reagan. But I mean, in the days, I mean, Goldwater was a Republican who was a conservative, who in many ways, I said, I'm sorry I didn't vote for him, you know, because the guy, maybe he wasn't, um, didn't share my politics, but he was a very honest man. I just finished a great book not long ago, which talks about the increased polarization between, you know, the left and the right. And this individual didn't take a particular stance. He's not a liberal writing, you know, nasty things or, or vice versa, vice versa. Yeah. What he claims, his contention is that this sort of attack politics started with Newt Gingrich. Ah, yeah. yes. And he makes yeah. a great case yeah. to support that yeah. because Wait. they were in the minority yeah. and he knew that the only way that he could find stature was to simply attack at all times. I think it was a documentary with Alex Jones that they mentioned mm -hmm. Newt Gingrich. Yeah. And, you know, what his problem was. That's when they got the idea that the important thing was to win. We don't care mm -hmm. how we do it. We just got to win. I had Newt on twice on my show on Sirius XM. Newt Gingrich? Yeah. yeah. First time I had him on, we just talked. I, became, I made him feel very comfortable. And I said to myself, what I want to do is make him feel comfortable. So he'll come back. And then I'll nail him. <laughs> and sure enough, about a month later, we get a call. Newt Gingrich wants to be on your show again. And I figured, good. The trap has been set. <laughs> and he comes on, and uh, we talk about stuff, and we go back and forth. And he says something, and I disagree with it. And, you know, it's just a pleasant conversation. And finally, I'm looking at the clock, and I'm seeing that it's come, coming down to like the last couple of minutes, because that's the time you ask the question, because if he's going to walk out, best he walks out then, then early, right? Because your job is to get an interview, not to get somebody to walk, okay? People sometimes say, why were you so nice to people you didn't like? And I said, because I don't want the, you don't want them to walk. That's not your job. Your job is to keep them there and get some answers out of them. But the question I asked him was, I said, can I ask you one last question? I said, are you a religious man? He says, oh, yes. Oh, absolutely. I said, is uh, Sunday the Lord's Day? He says, absolutely. I said, then how come you do all those talk shows? He didn't have an answer. <laughs> he said, well, I've gone to church already or something like that. And I went, no, but it's the Lord's Day. You're not supposed to work. I said, Chuck Schumer doesn't do interviews on Saturday, but he's got Sunday all to himself because you're yeah. supposed to be in church. And he couldn't answer that one. You know, and I felt so proud of myself. I said, thanks, mm -hmm. Newt. And that was the last time I ever seen, saw Newt Gingrich. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He didn't want to have anything to do with me. 
<laughs> but, you know, I mean, you can be a hero. You know, when you're doing an interview, you can be a hero and go after the guy and try and nail him. Or you can try and get stuff out of him. Um, that's what the guy from um, Axios was trying to do with Trump. He was trying to ask him straightforward questions, but he was trying to get answers out of him. Mm -hmm. And I felt so sorry for him because he couldn't get an answer out of him. What, uh, what Trump does if, he, if he's being asked difficult questions is he'll start, uh, 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 what, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, just talking, 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 and hoping the clock runs out. Defecating. Yeah, yeah. He's a fucking bad car salesman. You know, you're trying to get out of the dealership, and the guy won't fucking shut up. You're like, okay, okay, see ya, see ya. All right, fuck, shut up. This was a guy who was bad with money, okay? And yep. everybody thinks, that, oh, he's going to know how to solve the, the economic problems in this country. The only reason the economy has turned around is because people had to find ways of making money. You know, it wasn't anything the government did. He didn't turn it around by initiatives or anything else. No. Um, you know. Well, he inherited a fucking long recovery yeah. from the uh, Obama administration. Yeah, yeah. and prior to that, he day. inherited money from his father. So, you right. know, he always had it made in the shade. And he fucking he was, drove, he, he went bankrupt how many times in the nine, in the early, yeah. late 80s and early 90s? Well, yeah. it, the the big crime was he, he went bankrupt um, owning a casino. Yeah, yeah. How do you do that? Yeah, that's hard that, to do. It's very hard to do. You got to work yeah. real... And the, if you look at any of the stories people have written about that casino, you then see how it happened. Because he wouldn't listen to anybody. Yep. Yeah. He just wouldn't listen to anybody. And they went, hey, yeah. you, you're running a casino here. Talk to people who know how to run a casino. Oh, I know mm -hmm. how to run a casino. You put out the tables and people bet. Yeah. <laughs> Not that easy. He was yeah. born in third base and takes credit for hitting a triple. Yeah, right. exactly. Exactly. And then he bought the airline. That thing went bust. Remember the Trump airline? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then, yeah. then yeah. he 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 uh, bought the professional football team in a league that went bankrupt. Yeah, that went belly up. Yeah. Well, I, I, I was I was thinking we were talking about fashion earlier, and uh, I can imagine Ivanka Trump, um, or not Ivanka Trump, uh, Melania, malaria. Yeah. Uh, saying, uh, does this at, does this uh, dress make my ass look large? And uh, they say, no, he's he's huge anyway. He's big anyway. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, he he just, I and I'm so tired of talking about him, and I'm so sorry, tired of hearing yeah. people talk about him, and I a just. Friend, a I, friend of mine on Facebook the other day posted that if Trump were on the Titanic, he would have grabbed the dress. <laughs> <laughs> well, the thing is that I don't understand is that, it, that all that Biden really has to do is stay out of the way. Yeah. Just yep. stay out of the yep. way. You know, yep. And so far, he's been running a very smart campaign. Mm -hmm. you know? um, One half the clock. Huh? R r just don't. Hmm. You know, because he has a tendency to say things that just aren't right. I mean, not that Trump is, doesn't do exactly the same thing. Um, because both of them are too old to get with today's mentality. Well, yeah. Biden used to have a stuttering problem, so yes. he's yes. never been a great speaker, but he's been a good politician. He's, you know, I mean, yeah. pretty much good politician. I can't think yeah. of any really bad policies that he's been on the side of. Jeff? Yeah, I, I think he's been getting training on how to speak to you. Yeah. yeah. Man, he's, he's looking good. He wears better. the, he really wears nice suits. You know. Yes, that's right. Trump. Guy stayed nice and thin. He looks presidential. He looks, yeah. he I looks. Ride a bicycle. I saw him riding a bike. He looked okay. Well, you that's know, I do let's be honest. Really, when you're running for president, you're auditioning. Yeah. You know? And so you've got to play the part as well as you can possibly play mm -hmm. the part. And do it correctly. And Biden, he so Biden far, suits. huh? Biden suits aren't as nice as Wayne LaPierre's. Yeah. Well, La, Wayne LaPierre got his money for his suits from the NRA. Yeah. Free. Free. 
Yeah, yeah free. <laughs> and if anybody of those guys are going to go to jail for all that money, is that isn't that embezzlement from a nonprofit to be blown that kind of money? Uh, yeah, yeah, I think mm -hmm. so. Uh, I yes. think I think he's in a lot of trouble. I think they were all in a lot of trouble. Yeah. Uh, and uh, you know, there there are a lot of things you can do when you're running a com organization like that, but don't steal. You know, don't yeah. steal because that's just stupid. Mm. You know, because eventually you're gonna get caught. Yeah. Actually, don't steal with a bunch of guys with guns. Yeah, yeah that, well, that's good advice. That's that's good good advice. advice. You know, I, I, I have some meme on Facebook that says, you know, uh, the NRA just stole $63 million from their members, so apparently having a gun doesn't keep you from being robbed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <sighs> that's a good one. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Yeah, well, I and mean, kids, I, I asked Phil how he felt about having his dues going to Wayne LaPierre's... Uh, he made a joke. ...tonsorial elegance. He made a joke or something. Yeah. You know? I mean, uh, I would be irate if I were a member of the NRA and I found out that money wasn't going to what I thought it was going to. You know? Um, and that was a very wealthy organization at one time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, the suit uh, lodged by the state of New York, one of the suits, kind of helped bankrupt them. Uh, but, I mean, it, you know, uh, nothing surprises me these days, but I just, I, want, I just want Biden to win so I don't have to hear about Trump. That's the only reason. That's the biggest benefit yeah. to yeah. him being yeah. president of the United States is I don't have to hear about fucking Donald Trump. Yeah, you know that I don't wake up every morning. And say, Did you hear what Trump said today? Yeah. <laughs> well, I've got MSNBC over my head here, and now it apparently I don't have the sound on, but apparently he's floating um, conspiracy theories about Harris's eligibility. But yes, so it's a yeah. back oh, birth yeah. theory. It, it's another, 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 another birth birth all over again. again. I yeah. believe yeah. I believe she was born in the United States. Oakland, California. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the United States. He, um, she, her parents, I think, met here is yeah. what yeah. happened. Yes. Yeah. At yeah. a civil rights rally, I think. Yeah. Yes. And they, uh, they, uh, they had the kid. And <laughs> let's say they never had citizenship. Let's say they never got <laughs> citizenship. The kid is still a citizen of the United States. Yeah. So right. He's born here. Yeah. Okay. They were but, like... Pretty but, well accomplished people. They were like professors. Yeah, of, but starting yeah. another birther deal, yeah. you know, yeah. come on. That's that plan W. Well, yes, yeah, plan but, w. but nobody's ever told him that only works once. Yeah. If it yeah. works at all, you know. Uh, he doesn't believe in that. Yeah. But now, mm -hmm. is, he, is he openly questioning it? No, it's all I saw is a tagline on the screen here with Brian Williams, and it says that he repeats conspiracy yeah, theories it, about it her. It started eligibility. on Fox News with that yeah. uh, that that Mark Levin guy and uh, some other dude, and they were how about, oh, well, so. How about Janine Pirro on Fox saying <laughs> that Biden won't be part of the ticket in November because she feels something will happen? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> What's that? Is that a threat? Yeah. Well, we could say the same thing about Trump. And after seeing him lumber in and out of those press conferences, yeah. I think he's ready to have a stroke any moment now. Yeah. yeah. So how are things in Hawaii, Howard? How is everybody th feeling about stuff? We're doing good. I know. We're you doing really good. The blue state, I, I love though. how every time I go to Howard and I say, how are things going in Hawaii? Everything's fine in Hawaii. It is. Another I mean, day, we, we another got, day like, in four cases. You know, um, I got my hair cut. All right. Yeah. yeah. Do, you, yeah. do you see any uh, Trump stickers out there or Trump signs? No. no I wasn't. I wasn't kidding. You actually could fit all the Republicans in like one bar. Yeah. yeah. There aren't that many Republicans here. But if I were living in Hawaii, you know what I'd be saying? I am so sick and tired of watching those waves lap in and out. <laughs> Nah. There's one wave after another. In and out. In and out. Another fucking day in paradise. Boring. Uh, I could afford it. I'd move here tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah. You know where you can't afford to move now, it turns out? 
San Francisco, people are moving out at such a fast rate. Am I right, Brian? Yeah. Bubbles yeah, told the me rent, this. The rents are going down. The home medium is going down. Yeah. Same with Silicon Valley, too. Yeah. And New York City, <clears throat> same thing. Yeah. They, one thing that they're seeing is since Apple's not open again and Facebook's still, you know, nobody, everybody's working from home, that people who live like where Kevin does, down in those kind of areas or the central central area of California, yeah. people can now move out there because they're going to be working from home. So, yeah. yeah. So uh, it basically, um, uh, places that you felt you couldn't, I, I didn't think I could go back to San Francisco. I'm thinking, hey, I could, you know, that the, yeah, the, the, the rents are dropping like a rock, you know. So yeah. maybe uh, I should get out of this dive that I'm in here in the Tenderloin. I'm paying. <laughs> 1400 for a fucking studio. Yeah. <laughs> I, used to, I used to go to Ruby Sky every weekend when it was open. My friends owned that club, so I used to go by your area all the time. Yeah. Parked at o o O'Farrell and Mason, the parking lot right there. Go yep. across the street. Oh, right. O'Farrell and Mason. Brothers. I used to work at O'Farrell and Mason. That was <laughs> K that was at one time that was KTVU. Oh, really? That, the, what you, you know that big building with a big mural on it with the radio and everything? Uh, you know, oh, yeah. big building. It was Art Deco, but then they did away with those. They put in regular glass windows. That was called, ready for this? Radio City, San Francisco. Mm -hmm. There was Radio City in, in New York. O'Farrell and Mason? I think it was O'Farrell and Mason. American Music Hall was there. O'Farrell no, and that, Mason. That's no, that's O'Farrell and Polk. Oh, maybe it was O'Farrell. That's where I saw Tiny Maybe, maybe Tim. it was Taylor and O'Farrell. That we were at, is that? Yeah, sound? I think so. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know the building I'm talking about. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. yeah A yeah. beautiful Art Deco building, mm -hmm. just wonderful, wonderful. And uh, in fact, <clears throat> I and my friends who own this company, they went, we want, we were going to buy the building. Oh wow! Yeah, at one point. God yeah. damn! How long ago was that? A long time ago. Yeah. But we it, we it, we were thinking of buying it and turning it into. Uh, uh, for their company, which was new, to, uh, what was uh, Play Incorporated, and then we'd have studios and stuff there, and so on. And it was just a really nice place, you know. And then we figured what we would do was open up a nightclub in there, called Studio A at Radio City, and every night do a radio show from there <laughs> on stage and That's serve true. dinner. Well, we know we're getting towards the end here because we have our nightly appearance of Adrian. I'll just say goodnight. I'll say goodnight. Adrian is our is our Adrian. is our is our mascot. Yo, Adrian. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you have to school today. You had to school today. Yeah. 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 New school. She had school. New school. Transitional kindergarten today. Today was her first day of school. But Yay. did she go someplace right. or did she do it at home? At home. At, at home. home. Okay. Yeah. yeah, with that age group, it's a little bit tough, you know. And, oh, you. But if, the, the, the two other kids are doing good. They're all yeah. logged in, six classes. Adrian probably doesn't know what social distancing is. Kids <laughs> no. don't know what social distancing is. You know. Mm -hmm. Look at you her. Coronavirus. Oh, boy. Well, folks, it, we end with every night with uh, something that says, here's what we're fighting for. Yes, exactly. You, yeah. you know? And, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. What's she saying? She says, I watch CNN all day. She goes, you watch about the virus all day. Oh, OK. <laughs> <laughs> hey, listen, thank you, Howard. I always appreciate it. Same to you, Robert. Your intelligence has been a, a boon to the show. Uh, let me thank uh, John Larkin. Always love having you here. Jeff, you're an old friend. I haven't been able to see you because of this. Uh, and, and Charlie, you're great. You're a regular. And, of course, Tony, what can I say? But, hey, that's Tony. That's the wallpaper. And finally, Brian and Adrian. Adrian. Goodbye, Adrian. Are you going? There we go. Oh, she's playing with the camera now. All right. Okay, everybody, wave goodbye, and I'll wave back at you, okay? There we go. Ladies and gentlemen, that's our citizen panel for tonight. Uh, and uh, there'll be another citizen panel getting together right after we're through here with Jack Bishop in the intersection. They'll be doing that via Skype. So uh, 
that's a different way of doing it than here. We do it via Zoom. Yes, well, that's it for tonight. Uh, nice show, calm, everybody, copacetic. Uh, and uh, I just, I really am so glad they joined us. But tomorrow, Phil will be back and all will be different, okay? And all will be hostile again in paradise. Anyway, listen, we got to go. Uh, uh, Jack is next. Stay tuned for him. I'll see you tomorrow, 1030. Eastern Daylight Time right here at GabNet. Same time, same station in life. If you see her, tell her I love her. And by the way, if you got them, well, get one. And then wear a mask and be safe out there, okay? Bye-bye, everybody. <laughs>